Hey, it's Nathan with Crazy Marketing, and today I'm gonna to show you how to build a page inside a ClickFunnels page builder. So let's just get straight into it. Here I am in the page builder itself, and I just have a blank white page here, and we're just gonna go through everything the page builder has to offer, and you'll see how to build a page. All right, so here we are. Starting at the left, of course, there's an exit button, so you click exit to exit the page builder. Now, when you click that button and you haven't saved, like you're gonna lose all of your changes that you've made. So make sure you hit save way over here on the right before you exit, unless of course you don't wanna save your changes, then you just hit exit. All right, then we have two different views we can switch between. We have desktop view, which is what we're looking at now, and then you can hit mobile, and it shows you what your website or what your page will look like on a mobile device. And this is very handy because different sections, rows, columns, elements have different settings based off of whether you're on desktop or mobile devices. So you can make sure that your page looks great on both devices. So this is definitely handy to switch back and forth between desktop and mobile to make sure that everything looks good. Up next we have apps. Now you can't do anything with this. I'm not sure if there's plans for this feature in the future. Feature in the future? Okay. Uh, so th this might be functional at some point in time. Right now, this is just what it shows you. I don't know what the point is, but we'll close it for now. Uh, settings then, this is where you come in to set up your integrations. So integrations are with your auto autoresponder tool. Now you do have to set up your integration in like the, the ClickFunnels dashboard before you can set it up here in the page builder. So assuming that you set up your integration in the dashboard, when you're in the page builder, you could go ahead and connect your page to your automation tool, assuming that you have a form on your page. So that's how you set up the email integration. And I'll probably have another video where I show you how to set up a form and connect it to your automation tool using the integration settings. So that's to come. So that's integrations. Then we've got SEO metadata. And this is where you go ahead and set up the title of your page, the description, keywords, author, and then social image. And the social image, that's the image that appears when people share your link on Facebook, Twitter, etc. So that's a link that automatically gets populated. So you wanna make sure you have a pretty cool social image in order to draw people in. So that's where you change those settings around. Coming on down, we got tracking code then. So tracking code is where you place your pixels. So Facebook pixel, Google Analytics pixels, or any other tracking pixels you might have. You can also paste custom code in here. So if you have JavaScript or uh, CSS or any other codes you wanna paste in here, you can do that as well. You can paste it in the header. So if you have header code, you paste it there. In the footer, you just click this other tab and boom, you can paste your footer code right in this area. So that's very handy, of course, for, like I was saying, installing those pixels and tracking people through your funnel. And then we have custom CSS. So you can add CSS in the tracking code area, or you can do it here, which is probably the proper way to do it. Uh, so if you know CSS or are familiar with it, you could go ahead and add that here. So nice and easy. If you don't know anything about CSS, don't worry about it. The page builder is meant to be user-friendly for people of all skill levels. So if you don't know what a CSS is or JavaScript is, you're, you're gonna be okay. All right, background, pretty self-explanatory. We can add a background image or we can change a color, or we could even add a video. So depending on you know, how you want your page to look, you could go ahead and change the background settings. Moving on down, we've got topography. So we have the content font and then headline font. And then we have different colors. So text color, link color. Um, you don't necessarily need to set these up. You, as you edit the page and you add different elements, different text elements or headline elements, you can choose whatever font you want on that particular element. So it's not critically important to set these up. Like I always forget to set them up and you know, I just change it on the element itself, but you can change it at like the page level if you want to. There's also pre-established themes. So if you're not very good with typography or you don't know what looks good together, they got a few, few options you can go ahead and select and that way your page wording fonts look good, right? So there's that option. Coming back over here, then we got general now. So general settings, we have a few options. So on submit, go to. So naturally, or how it typically works is when you have your funnel, you have different pages in a row, right? They're like it's, they're called different steps. So you got step one, and then after step one, they go to step two, and then step three, and so on. So 
Naturally, if you don't put anything in this area, it's just gonna go down to the next step in your funnel. If you want to go to a different page after somebody clicks submit, then you paste that link right in here and you could go to a different page in your funnel or you could go to like a different website altogether if you really wanted to. So that, that can be very handy when you're designing complicated or complex funnels. So I use this sometimes whenever it's applicable, but it's a good feature to have. A digital asset, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure how this functions. Um, every time I deliver a digital asset, I do it through an email or a membership portal. So I don't know what this option does, to be honest. So sorry, maybe I should Google that and come back and try, try and fill it in. Then we have the affiliate badge. So ClickFunnels will put a little badge in the bottom right-hand corner of your pages um, in order to you know promote their product. Now it is an affiliate link, so if somebody clicks on it and signs up for ClickFunnels, you'll earn a commission. But if you're not trying to earn commissions for ClickFunnels, like it's just a distraction. So you probably wanna turn off the affiliate badge unless you have a reason to have it. And you can also turn it off at the account level. It's under your account settings. There's like affiliate options and you could switch that dongle thing, doggle, dongle, whatever it is, the little slider thing, switch it off. And then that way, like your affiliate badges won't show up on your pages. And then of course, if you want your page to be found or be able to be found by search engines, you could have it show or hide. So you might want to hide like your OTO pages or pages that have products on them or anything like that. Uh, so that way search engines don't accidentally find it uh, or, you know, show. So if you want people to be able to find your page, make sure that that says show. And then you can also save your page as a template. So if you design like a pretty template or a pretty page that you probably want to use other places, then you hit this save page as template and then you can use that page as a template uh, to you know, design other pages, right? Hopefully that makes some sense. All right, so that was settings. And then we have pop-up, and I'm just gonna briefly hit on this. So we got pop-up, show pop-up. So this is what the pop-up looks like just by itself, and this is also page builder E. So the same, same concepts apply with like rows and columns, which we're about to get into. So if you can design a page, you can design a pop-up. We go to edit pop-up settings and we have different settings here. So we got background image, trigger on exit. So exit intent technology. So sh don't show on exit or show when user tries to exit. Two different options. Width or width of the, the pop-up, self-explanatory. Uh, backdrop, background color, text color, padding, etc. You can read all that type of stuff. Then of course there's advanced settings as well. So most every uh, element in ClickFunnels has two tabs up here. So they'll have like a settings and an advanced, and then they might even have sub tabs as well. Like this one's got styles and animation and other features in ClickFunnels may have other tabs. So that's just something to note. There's a lot of different options and you just gotta make sure that you click between these different tabs in order to find what you're looking for. And more often than not, what you're trying to do does exist somewhere in here. You just gotta figure out which tab they might have hit it under, right? So that's this is what the pop-up looks like. You can preview what it would look like on a mobile device as well. So you can see how everything's working and then edit settings, which is where we just were. So that's the pop-up. And then how the page builder works is based off of sections, rows, columns, and elements. Now sections are the big sections, like big, big sections. We're gonna go through all these in just a second, so bear with me. We got sections, and then inside of sections, we have rows, and inside of rows, we have columns, and that could be one column, so one column row, or it could be six columns, uh, just whatever you need for your website, right? And then inside of elements, or I'm sorry, inside of columns, you have elements. And elements are like text elements, headline elements, image elements, videos, buttons, forms, uh, countdown timers, icons, progress bars, etc. So these are all the elements. And of course, that's what like makes your page, gives it the content and everything. I'm not gonna go through all these elements in this video because we'd be here for four hours. So I'll probably have another video with some of these elements highlighted and how to use them. So that's where they are. And then we got preview and save. So if you wanna see what your page would look like online, you just hit this preview button and it loads up and it's just a blank page, which is to be expected. And my chair keeps falling. I need to brace that somehow. All right, so let's go ahead and check this out. So remember, we got sections, rows, columns, elements. So to start it off, we need to add a new section. 
and we got full width which spans the entire width of the page we got wide which is like 90 percent of the page or so medium small so i'll go full width for this first one and then you'll notice this is green green area this green row green section so sections are green rows are blue and elements are yellow or orange ish and i'll show you columns in a second but so we're over this section now which is green we got gear options for settings we got clone so we could clone a section so if we design a section that we like and we want to clone it we can do that we could also save sections and load them into other pages that we build later on and you could also delete sections so let's go to the settings because that's what i wanted to show you mostly so just like the pop-up had set different settings so do sections rows columns and elements and we got settings and you can change margins background image section width sticky background color so let's change the background color so we can see what we're working with we could change our padding move that around and really get it to look and feel how we want it to look and feel right right colors and all that type of stuff then we got advanced settings so corner radiuses radii radius border throw a border on the bottom there we could change you know how thick it is change its color looking pretty we could drop a shadow if we want to look at that that's cool we could float it position it etc and then we got animation so we could do a time delay so make this section show up after 30 seconds of somebody being on the page or make it disappear after 30 seconds whatever uh, you want it to do let me come back over to the settings and then if you look down here at the bottom there's display settings too so right here we're choosing to display this section on all so mobile and desktop you could also display it only on mobile devices or only on desktop you could also hide this element or this section sorry gotta use proper terminology the section so if we want to hide it and make it appear later on we could go ahead and do that here uh, there's also get css info so if you're familiar with css you could you know grab this and then go up in there and type in some custom css code to do whatever you want with it so that's where you get the the ids uh, to make changes come back in here so if we put this on mobile only like it comes over to mobile only view but then we switch to desktop we just see a white page so this is how you can you know make your page look different on different devices right uh, by showing it on mobile devices or not mobile devices or desktop only or whatever so a lot of flexibility here and you can make it you know look however you want on whatever device so that's the section that's the full width one let me just change it just for an example so we'll go with medium so there's medium right there all right so inside of sections again we got rows so add new row we got one two three four five six left sidebar right sidebar um, so yeah, depending on how you want to, you know, design your page is how you select the column. So let's just say I want to do a two column. Oh, a two column row, maybe. There we go. So we got two columns now, and I could resize them by just dragging this bar. Pretty intuitive, point and click, nice and easy. And then you'll notice that the row is blue, blue box, and then green box are sections. So if I hit the gear here, I'll have options for editing my row. So again, same options as like a section. So you can change things however you want and make it customized to suit your needs, make it pretty, all that type of stuff. Same view options. So if you want to display it on mobile or desktop or hide it or whatever you want to do, you got that. Same advanced settings as well. So I'm not going to go into this again. I think you get the idea. So there's our section. Then we got a row and then we have two columns inside of our row so let's hit columns now and you see we got first column and hopefully you can see it kind of highlights there's little boxes in there i think you should be able to see it i think uh, so that's that can help you identify which column you're in you hit this pencil option and now you got column settings so we could change the margin of that column or background image or background color let's make it blue We'll add some padding and make it kind of stand out. So we got that. Let's throw some shadow in here just for fun. Oh, it's not showing up. Let's try. Oh, it's all too dark. So that's one column. Come back in here. We can do the second column. Let's make it 
red. And we'll throw some padding in it as well. And boom, so you can start designing your page. You hit the mobile view. You see that the columns stack on top of each other. So it makes it sure it looks nice. Uh, and that's something to note, like if you have like an arrow or something like that pointing to the left or right or wherever your arrow is pointing, make sure that on a mobile device, like that arrow makes sense. And you could of course hide the hide that arrow or that section or row or column on a mobile device or whatever, right? All right, and then finally, inside of each column, we have elements. So just for example, I'm gonna add a headline element and there it is. I can click into it, type whatever I wanna type. And then there are, of course, you hit the gear, the headline or the element has its own settings as well. So you can customize it to suit your very needs. Again, advanced animation, all sorts of different settings in here. All right, now let me hit save real quick and we'll hit preview, check out our page. So this is what our page looks like, super pretty and attractive. I'm sure it's very high converting. But this is how you go ahead and design a page using the ClickFunnels page builder. It's very intuitive, user-friendly, and uh, can be used to design great looking pages. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you want me to go through a bunch of different elements and show you how they work, leave that in the comments down below. I'll make some element type videos. And yeah, hopefully this was helpful. All right, take it easy.